SoundCloud. Hi. Okay, we are officially recording. So welcome everyone to Tuesday Training with the Sunflower Crew. Uh, I am Peg Wilson, the uh, star director of Team Embrace. And we have a couple of our other directors on here. And tonight we are actually going to talk about vendor events. And I have our friend Ruth here who happens to be an expert at vendor events, right Ruth? So Ruth is gonna help me here. Um, how many of you do vendor events or want to do vendor events? Give us a show of hands, although I have to keep flipping back and forth. Okay, so I, I see Casey raised her hand. Karen raised her I just her did hand. an online one. I'm not sure if that's what we're really talking yeah, I, I have, yeah, all of them count. I have one coming up in May, so this is like super important because it'll be the first one I ever did. Okay, awesome. I'm super awesome. excited okay, so about this training. All right, I see lots of hands raised, so that's good. Okay, so then uh, hopefully this will be good information for you. Okay, so there are some rules about vendor events that we'll talk about the rules beforehand. And Ruth, you can chime in here too when it comes to the rules. Um, <laughs> Ruth is like, I don't follow the rules. <laughs> So I follow the rules loosely, okay? So the most important thing is, as far as vendor events go, if you are posting that you are at a vendor event and you take a picture of your table, do not take a picture of your table with a whole bunch of stock. Basically, Sensi says that you are not allowed to take a picture of like more than like 10 items and post them in a picture. So, you know, you know, take a picture of a small part of your display or, you know, you standing behind your table with not all of your stuff and just say, come and visit me at such and such an event. I've never really had a problem. I've had people take pictures of me that were hosting the event and post them. I've never really had a problem with it, but that is the general rule is to, that's what you're supposed to do. Go ahead, Ruth. I see you want to Yeah. So I actually at an event, I will actually have my camera facing me and tell them where I'm at to come and see me. Then I will flip my phone around and just, it's a video, it's a live video. And I'll show them my whole booth real quick. And then I run to the next vendor and say, these are all the rest of the vendors that are here. And I walk around the whole room so that they know whether it's worth them coming. I mean, somebody right. may be looking for something from 31 and 31's there or Tupperware or whatever. So I do do that. But yes, if I take a photo, it's only like 10 or just of the diffusers or just of the wax or whatever. Yeah. 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 And that's really, that's really the, the main part of the rule that you have to follow, um, you know, because I mean, the rest of it is like when you're there, you can sell items for anything that you want while you're there. So if you want to discount your stock and stuff, you just can't advertise any of that publicly. Okay. So that's really the most important part of the rules to follow. So now let's go back to the beginning. How do you find vendor events? There's lots of different ways to find vendor events. You definitely want to um, organically through your contacts is the best way. You build up your reputation. People know you as the Sensi lady and their church is having a fair or, you know, a vendor event is some kind of a fundraising thing. And that is really the best way is by through organic contacts. You can look through your newspapers. There are some sites out there. I know like in New Jersey, there's like New Jersey vendor events. They seem to all be in North Jersey for our sake. Yes. You know, for the ones that are local here, it's very hard to find them in South Jersey. But really the best way to do it is through word of mouth and just getting your name out there, doing network contacts, go on to, um, go on to direct sales websites and things like that and make contact with other vendors you know, make friends with 31 people and, you know, all these different uh, direct sales companies and find out where they're doing events. I have like a whole network of people and we all let each other know when we're going to be at different vendor events. You know, my 31 lady and my tastefully simple lady and my paparazzi ladies, I have several paparazzi ladies, but they all let me know when they have events that are coming up. So that's really probably your best way to, um, to find events is through referrals. Um, how about you, Ruth? Anything to chime in there? No, but I will tell you this. Most of mine have been either um, somebody um, gave me a referral or they're big ones that I know are taking place. We've had some trouble here in Kansas City area that I know of. And one of the directors on a different team, a, a superstar director can vouch for this. There has been on Facebook a girl advertising events and then the people pay and then there's no event. So yeah. just be really careful. I usually make sure, and if you're going to do it, ask them, 
how many years have you done it? What's the turnout, et cetera, et cetera, so that you know, because this superstar director had, had a hard time even getting her money back. Yeah. So th they ended up taking this girl to court and all that. I mean, and not only the Cincy girl, but several of the other vendors that were supposed to be at the event. So I mainly do mine by referrals. Yeah. And yeah, then, we, had a, we had a similar situation here in New Jersey where we have a lady who does events regularly. But during COVID, a bunch of the events got canceled. Well, I mean, her events are like, you know, some, I mean, you can get events that are, that'll cost you 25 bucks and then you can get events that you pay a couple hundred dollars. So this lady does these long events where they're like a three day, you know, weekend events and I might pay $250. So I put a deposit, a hundred dollar deposit on three different events. She sent us all a message at the beginning of the spring saying all these events are canceled and, you know, due to COVID and because we're all small business and we all lose money and she spent all this money on advertising and she wasn't refunding her money. She just kept it, you know, so, uh, you know, and it's like, you know, what recourse do you have? I mean, she got bad mouth all over Facebook. So she did eventually send us all messages and say that these will be good for next year. Like your deposit, she'll, she'll put them towards next year. But, you know, I mean, that's the risk. And, you know, I mean, as far as like cost of events too, uh, again, you can do like a church bazaar that might just cost you, you know, 35 bucks for a table. And then you have these long events or like the bridal shows and stuff like that. Sometimes the bridal shows can be thousands of dollars. Now, I do know that lots of times uh, some of the people I tried to get Debbie Pitts Palmer to come on because I know she does like these huge big events. But what she does is she does them with her whole team. So like there might be, you know, 10 consultants and they'll all split the cost and they all get so many hours there. Now, I'm not sure how they work it out as far as like you know, splitting the profits or whatever from it. I can tell you that I do it with a lot of um, my team, especially when I have team. And as a matter of fact, I have a big event this weekend. If anybody that's local wants to do a ride along and check out the event, what I do with my team members is I will take somebody along with me to the event. Most of the time it's, if they have particular things they want to sell, I'll tell them to bring them. But most of the time we'll just do my products because I have so much stock. We'll put my products out and then whatever I sell, I have them reorder stock for me. So they get the PRV, you know, and I'll get my stuff back because I'm trying to help them build their business, you know, so as, and that's because I'm a star director. So if you're doing that with somebody that is, you know, a consultant, just like you, you might not want to work it that way. You might want to split you know, the cost of whatever is sold, that person gets back theirs, you know, you guys split whatever the profits are. So you work that out individually, how, it, how you decide to. But my main focus when I do vendor events is not selling product. My main focus is I'm there to recruit. Yep. I'm there to recruit. I'm there to get my name out there and get more customers. Most of the things that you will sell, it's not worth it to go and bring 50 warmers unless you're doing a big giant weekend festival. If you're doing something that is, you know, a couple of hours at the church, bring it 50 warmers. I could tell you, you'll be lucky if you sell two. Most of what people are coming, oh, you guys there? Yeah. Sorry, I clicked off. I got a call coming through. Um, most of the, the vendors that are there are going to our vendors. Most of the customers that are there are there to restock their wax. They're like, oh, there's a Scentsy lady. And lots of times they have a, a Scentsy consultant they're just there to you know it's there it's in front of their face and they're going to restock so always make sure that you have plenty of business cards to hand out I always carry product sheets with samples you know some people absolutely hate the product sheets product sheets are really great for that kind of thing it kind of gives them a snapshot of what you have some people have never heard of Scentsy before so it gives them a snapshot of what's in your catalog without you giving away a bunch of your catalogs but always make sure that your information is on anything that you hand out you have anything to add to that, Ruth? Well, I have a couple of things. So on the vendor events, if you do call, if somebody gives you and says, hey, there's a vendor event next month and you call them and they already have a Cincy consultant, tell them, put me down as a backup because that person may cancel. They may end up quitting Cincy. They may have a family emergency and then nobody's there for Cincy. So I always do that. I always say, put me down as a backup. Um, and then normally at a lot of my events, they'll let me put a deposit for the next year, especially my big ones, like yes. my three day events. I put a deposit down when I leave this year for next year. So, and then um, 
I also, like I just did an RV show. And so I took, I had the campers left and I had the pickup trucks with the campers. That's what I took as my warmers. And then I took like um, some of the men's things like the camo warmer and um, just, I try to figure out what it is. And so like, I didn't take, I have a ton of Halloween warmers. I didn't take those. I'm keeping those for my October event. So I try to figure out what type of an event it is. Now my home show is a three day event. It's huge. I have a double booth and I take everything except for my holiday warmers. So, but always take, I would take all of your bulbs, your product flyers. Um, and then I take all of my wax, all of my That's current wax. Tough. Now I didn't take, like when we went down there, I didn't take any of my holiday wax that I had left over. But I have tons. I probably have 3,000 bars of wax. So, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't take, well, because they'll come in and they'll buy like a six pack of something. You know, yeah. they, in, they only like welcome home. So they'll buy six or a 12 pack. Right. So when I know I have an event coming, I make sure I suck up on that. So, right. So, and, and just so everybody knows, like generally most consultants that are not doing events don't carry a bunch of stock. No. So don't no. think that you have to have hundreds of bars in stock. I have about 400 bars on hand, but that's because I do events. And because I haven't had any events, my bar stock is, you know, and I, and I try and like refresh it with some of the spring stuff, but I try and turn my bars around. I have four containers and like, that's my limit. When my four containers are full, I don't buy any more wax until I get rid of what's in my four containers to make room. Cause I don't want to have tons and tons of stuff where Ruth does mostly events. Right. So and most of her business is events. Yeah. And if you're doing events, um, don't worry about stocking up on warmers. Because like mm -hmm. she said, if you're going to stock up on warmers, buy the plugins because they will buy yeah. those. But stock up on bars because that's what they're going to buy. It's a convenience thing. They have right. consultants. But like, oh, well, you have eucalyptus and my customer, my consultants can't get it anymore. Well, I have three bars that were left over. So they buy them. So do right. that. And then as far as splitting events, I don't ever split events. I always, um, I have one girl on my team that she works it with me and she just does it to get out of the house. So I usually buy her dinner one night or something like that. But when I did do the home show with another girl, what we did was we each took $300 worth of product. So we each took we actually did it by product. So we each took five plug-in warmers. So then when we sold them, say we sold seven. So uh, that meant that I took, uh, there was three left. So I took one and she took one. And then if I took the other plug-in, then I owed her something for 10 bucks. Okay. To make it even you have to figure it it's really i got really confused the first time i did it because it's like but you have to figure it out so if you're gonna go take the same products like take take the same amount of 30 dollar warmers the same amount of whatever so that you're even and then right. that way if you sell then you know you know and then you take back the warmers that you had now if we one time we ended up selling all of her warmers but we had mine left so she had to take two of my warmers because okay. I wasn't just going to buy her two. I made her take right. two that I had on hand. So it, it depends on how you want to work it, but that's how I did it. And it, for me, it was too much hassle and work. So now I just say, and I tell my team, if you guys want to come and work it with me for the experience, because then they'll know how to do an event. I'll do that too. Yeah. 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 And I, I mean, you know, and that's something you work that out before you do the event. If you're going right. to share it with somebody, make sure you work out all those details beforehand. Like for me, I found it once I developed a team and I was trying to help my team grow, it worked better for me to just bring all my stuff. And then they got the PRV. So they got the PRV and the commission on it, but I got all my stuff back. Right. So for me, I wasn't really making money on it, but I was helping my team grow. You know, so, so in that respect, that worked out well for me. Now, when I very, when I started out and I was, yeah, I think I was, I think I was, um, my first couple of events, I think I might've been a star consultant and, um, my friend Terry, 
Terry was the same, you know, with the same level as I was. So we would bring all of our stuff and then we would, you know, we'd write down lists of everything that we sold and we'd know that she had 30 bars, I had 30 bars. And when we went home, you know, we said, okay, well, we sold, you know, we sold 30 bars. So here, you know, this is what's left. There's 15 for you, 15 for me, you know, and then we work out the profits between. So that's definitely something that's some negotiating that you want to do. Right. Um, you know, before the event so that you can figure all that out. It gets a little confusing, but, you know, worth right. it in the long run because you are getting the contacts. And what we would also do is whoever talked to that person, that person became their contact. Yeah. And we wrote our name on that slip at the top. Mm -hmm. So we know who got that slip when we got home to split it up. And then one other thing too, is if you're doing an event, this is just my opinion, but if I'm doing an event, that's like an evening event, that's from like five to eight. I usually do it by myself. It's not worth not worth yeah. somebody else do it with you. Even a one day event, most of those I do myself. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing is now, you make friends with the person in the booth next to you so that you can go to the bathroom. Right. right. <laughs> Grab a drink. Because, you know what I mean? Because, that's, that's really yeah. Because I've noticed that most of my one day events, there's not a lot of people there. Now, if it's a festival, like we have Glad Fest in the fall, like the fall festivals, I always have an extra person working those with me. The home shows, the bridal shows, whatever, the sports shows, wherever you're at. And those are some of the ideas. You can do home shows. I did a garden show, was mm -hmm. a three-day event. Um, the bridal show, I've never done, but some people do. And then like- Yeah, bridal shows are good. I've done a couple of those. And then your sports shows and your fishing mm -hmm. shows that are three-day events. And, and I've done like, I've done car festivals, you know, like antique car shows. Yeah. And that's great because man, I'll tell you, you sell all kinds of circles and car bars at those. Yeah. And somebody, a lot of people, somebody here has all of the gun shows. But if you guys mm -hmm. have gun shows, they do that too. So those yeah, are so they're like some of the shows. So now also when you're doing events, what you want to make sure now th this is, this is probably my biggest tip. I will tell them that I am going to chance off a warmer at the end of the day. And I'll tell them that it depends on what warmer I have left. Like whichever warmer I have left, I haven't decided which one it's going to be, but I bring the raffle sheets and you could get them in the Sensi store. You can get the drawing slips um, right in the Sensi store, or you could create your own. I mean, I've also gone on and created my own. But what I do is when I hand them the raffle sheet, I say, do you want to enter my raffle? I chance off a warmer at the end of the day. Some people will ask, some people don't ask at all. I tell, I tell them that they have to put down their phone number and their email address though on the order form. So, you know, they don't have to give me their full address if they don't, but I have to have their email address and their phone number so that I can notify them if they win. Okay. Right. And then I will take that slip off them. I'll put my drawing box, but I will put it far away that they can't reach it. I'll put it like up on my shelf or something like that. And they see the drawing box, you know, and I'll have stuff all over the place. I'll have clipboards with pens you know, throughout my display and say, oh, and make sure you make sure you fill out one of my raffle forms. Some people won't even ask what it is. They're just like, oh, raffle form. Okay. I'll fill it out. You know, but when I, when I take that raffle form often, they'll be like, where do I put this? I always hold it in my hand and then I have a conversation with them and whatever that conversation I have with them is, I will flip that form over and I will write notes to myself lady wearing a red dress, you know, with a, a brown hat. She had two screamy, whiny kids, you know, I mean, whatever it is that's going to make you remember that person and remember the conversation that you have with them. You know, we chit chatted. Uh, I have a daughter who's on the autism spectrum. So, you know, lots of times that, that topic will come up and, you know, that person might know something about, oh, I'm a special ed teacher. or Oh, I have a kid too. That's on the spectrum. And I'll write that on the slip. So that then when I follow up with that customer, I always, always follow up with everybody that I meet at events, whether they won the prize or not, I will send them a, a, an email saying, it was great meeting you at the pumpkin festival today. I'm sorry you didn't win the prize, but I'd love to tell you about the specials that I have this month. It was really nice meeting you and Johnny. He was so cute, you know, and you know, you want to make it say they were, they have to feel like they were important to you. And the way that they're going to feel important is you remembering the details of meeting them. So for me, I'm terrible with names. So I will write down, literally, this lady was wearing a red dress and she had blue shoes on, you know, so it's got to be something that's going to stick in my head that's going to make me remember that person and the conversation. So you can make them feel special. And I've gotten more team members and more customers from events. That's how you get outside your circle. Like that's 
the joy of events is that this is the way you get out of your circle of friends. You're meeting a whole different group of people. And I have this pumpkin show that I have done every year since I joined Sensi. I hooked up with this lady and I've done this show every year for the past five years. I have people that literally only come to the pumpkin show to find me. They don't buy from me the rest of the year, but they come to find me at the pumpkin show. There's a girl that's on our team. That, that's, that's how she got on our team because four years in a row, she found me at the pumpkin show and I talked to her every single time about joining. And then finally I said to her, when are you going to pull the plug? When are you going to do it? You know, and she did, she finally joined the team, you know? So I, I mean, it's a really great way to get out there and meet people. So before we go any further, does anybody have any questions? Give us a hand how, raise. How do you, um, like, what do you use to display your wax? Like, I know you said you have yours in crates. Um, do you use, like use the little spinny things that they sell where you can hang couple, them? I have a couple of different things. So I can tell you that it depends on the event. If mm -hmm. for my big three day events, I have a big, and I'm going to, and I'm going to take you all with me and I'm going to take you to my garage where I have all my sensi stuff and my big sensi displays and I'll show you my goodies. So here is, here's my, <laughs> my sensi garage. But I have this big tower that I bought from a store that was going out of business. Okay. So that has the clips on it. And I will sometimes use that. I bought this display stand off of somebody who was selling it on Marketplace. It used to be all white. And I thought I'd get creative and paint it purple. And I did a really crappy job. But it gets the job done. I have these that you can buy in the Scentsy store that I will put the cleaners on here. So it gives me two levels to display them. You can see I have a couple of them. So I'll use those to display. This is um, one of those ladder shelves. Uh, if I can get it to open up. Come on, open up. I'm gonna, just gonna knock everything over, but you get the idea. That's one of the ladder shelves. This is um, one of those stir light shelves that pop together. Mm -hmm. This is a little display shelf. You can see it kind of pops out. So these are all the things that I use. You can see I have my tents back here. You know, that's all the stuff that I use when I do my events. Like they're the kind of things that I take with me. My wax, I will use, I will put them on that big thing. I also have in this Scentsy store, um, there is this little rack. Let me take you back here. Uh, where is it? This one. You can get this in the Scentsy store and it has little pegs that go in it. Okay. And it rotates. So that holds... That holds about 30 bars of wax, I think on each side. So that generally, and it fits on a tabletop. So that generally is good for the, like the average person who's doing an event. Um, and then I'm gonna, I just have all my stuff on the table. So this is how I store my wax. And sometimes I just take these with me. So this is how I store my wax. These are actually under the bed containers. So you can see I could fit four rows. They don't have anything separating them, but I could fit four rows and I do my things in color. So I like my things to be in color order because I think it's more pleasing to the eye. So there you can see, oh, I got my blues and my greens. Over here, I got some more greens, some yellows and some browns. I have my specialty wax over in here. So these are all my specialty ones. That's like the licensed ones. And in here, there's my pinks, my purples. So th that is about 400 bars of wax. So that's the way that I choose to display mine. Lots of people do it different ways, but that'll give you some ideas. And you know, it doesn't have to be all this stuff. There are people who literally will take their kit, just what you get in your kit, which is one, one warmer, a bar of wax, a cleaner, you can take that and display it on a table because your purpose there is to meet people. You know, you, you don't necessarily have to have a whole bunch of stuff to sell. I have been to, you know, two vendor events where literally the consultant that was there had their books laid out, their testers laid out yep. and just a couple of items displayed and then they hand out their information. So if you don't have anything to sell to people, they will still come over. They will still come over. You could still... Do the drawing slip, you could still talk to them. So don't think you have to have a whole bunch of stuff for people to buy. It's okay to do a vendor event with nothing. You know, so does anybody have any more questions?
I can post pictures of what I use because I don't think you can see, but this is my, I have these little things. Whoops. I got these from a place called Storables out in on the West Coast. And they'll hold, I do like three, I put them alphabetical and I do like three of each bar. And that's what I put them in. And then I have totes with all the rest of my wax underneath. And then I don't know if I'm doing a bigger event, I'll do a pegboard and hang up, hang my wax on them. And then I'm trying to see if I have, here was one more suggestion. Cause you want to free your table up. You don't want your table to look like really cluttered. So mm -hmm. I bought these little wooden wine boxes. So you can put some on the bottom and some on the top. Um, but I also have a stand like pegs, but mine is a tower, a wooden tower that a guy made. And it's got three outlets on the front and the back and three on each side. And that's what I put my plugins on if I'm doing a day a one day event. If I'm doing a big event, I bought these racks and they're on wheels. And then across the top, the very top shelf, I bought a surge protector that goes all the way across. It holds 12. And so my three day events, I can plug all of my plugins in there and then I put the boxes behind them. And then on the rest of these shelves, or all my other warmers that I fit in there and I put the box behind it. So right. And I can tell you for your one day events, the biggest pain in the butt is unpacking all those warmers and then yeah. packing them all up again. Yeah. So I only do that like that display shelf that I showed you. It has two higher shelves and one yeah. lower shelf. It fits six plug in warmers and three, I have three shelves. That is all I bring. I bring the plug-in warmer so that I can fill that up. I usually put one of the fan diffusers in there and then the rest of them are actually light up ones. And I try and do a variety. Like I'll do, um, I'll do a couple of the glass ones, you know, maybe the, the tea rose. So it's a, like a glow one. So then I can talk to them and I can say, oh, you like this one? Well, I also have this one, this one, and this one that glow like that. You know, oh, you like the, the morning, uh, the morning sunrise, you know, you like the glass ones. I have other ones that are like that. Like, even if I bring them with me, you don't necessarily have to have them displayed. And I will tell you the biggest thing you want to bring, if you have a diffuser, bring a diffuser. I never sell my diffuser that I have there. I tell them they have to order it so that they can register it but I never sell my diffuser that's there, but it brings people over. The Stargaze diffuser has sold me more diffusers at events. I literally had a woman at an event that was, it was a three hour event. I, there might've been 10 people there and you would think that that would be a bust, but guess what? One lady saw the Stargazer diffuser and she bought three of them at an event. She saw it, she loved it. She bought one for her, one for her daughter and one for her bedroom. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, that, that's, that definitely was worth my $35 that I put out for that event to sell three right. diffusers. And she's a regular customer now. I mean, that lady buys all the time. So, you know, I mean, I even have, I, so I have a, lo a lady that's local who does, um, she calls them psychic events, or sometimes she calls them sip and shops. She does them at like local breweries and wineries and she has psychics that do, you know, card readings and stuff like that. And she brings in like two or three vendors. So, you know, sometimes it's only 20 people that are there, but I got to the point where I was doing one and it was, it's at the Deptford Marriott. So she did it every Wednesday at the Deptford Marriott. So I had all my local customers that knew they could come and see me every Wednesday at the Deptford Marriott. I would be there and they would come there and pick up their orders and, you know, and come there and smell the new wax, like whatever the scent of the month was, they knew when the scent of the month was coming in and they would make sure that they met me there so that they could sell it. They could get a, or they could smell it and get a sample of it. So, you know, I mean, that's, that's the nice thing about finding a place where you can do regular things and don't be afraid to contact like, you know, local, um, local breweries, local wineries, and just say, Hey, would you let me come in and set up my stuff one night? I give away free samples. It's something that's nice for your customers, you know, while they're sitting there sipping wine, you know, maybe they want to come over and do a little shopping. They'll do that to bring people in. You tell them I advertise it all over and wherever I am, I advertise it like crazy and advertise like Ruth said, the other vendors that are there. 
Yeah. Because yeah. somebody might not want to see Sensi, but they might want to see Tastefully Simple. They'll come for Tastefully Simple and they're probably going to stop by your table too. Here's my wooden thing that the plugins fit on, if you can see it. Turn your camera a little bit, the, the angles. Can you guys see that? So there's three on the front, three on the side, three on each side and three in the back. I don't put the ones in the back, but I use the back one to plug in my phone charger when my phone goes dead. <laughs> <laughs> But I was going to say, too, since you're not taking everything that you have, maybe you have extra warmers and you're only taking, maybe you have 20 warmers and you're only going to take five of them. And somebody comes up and says they want something, you can always tell them, well, I have instead of, because sometimes when I tell them that the, I don't have it, they'll have to order it or I'll have to order it. They'll go, oh, I can get it from my consultant. But I always tell them, oh, I have it at home if I do. And then I say, I can deliver it next week to you. So kind of have an idea of what you have in inventory if you're not taking all of your inventory with you because then that way you can you know that that's a quick yes to a no when they say oh no never mind you can say oh but wait i do have it i just didn't bring it because the show is so is a smaller show or whatever so i do that right. and honestly if you if you have room to throw a box of warmers in your car and just know that they're in your car and say to people i don't have it out here but i have it in my car and being able to run out to your car and grab it, you know, tell them, all right, finish your shopping and stop back, you know, have them pay for it first though. <laughs> There's a tip, yeah. have them pay for it first and come back and pick it up because sometimes they just don't come back. Don't come back. Yeah. 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 And, then, yeah. and then if they, if you're holding it for them, they don't come back, then you'll have other people come wanting it. I've had that happen at my three day events. And so now they have to pay for it up front and I'll hold it. But if they don't pay for it up front, I don't. And then when they come back, they yeah. go, well, where'd it go? And I go, you didn't pay for it up front. And I, I had a chance to sell it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. What about like the one I'm doing is right before Mother's Day. Do you suggest making like Mother's Day gifts or just keep it basic? Well, I'll tell you, I've done that. I've never really had great success with that, but I do see other people do that. Now, you know, they're, they, you can literally just go with the gift sets. You know, I, and the truth of the matter is you might do better with the gift sets if you just bring the gift sets, you know, and always have your cards available, exchange cards with other vendors that are there. You know, I, I usually, and lots of times, some of the other vendors become some of your best customers too, you know, but the gift sets, I mean, you know, and it depends, you know, I've, I've had some of them, like, especially around the holidays, like I do, um, I do, as a matter of fact, let me show you them. I have them still left. I, I call them my car care kits, you know, and I'll bring those. Like whenever I do a Christmas event, I bring those with me and they do fabulous. But yet think, I've done it. So here. Yeah. And I think those do better at Christmas time because people are looking for secret Santa gifts and that Or for a mother's right. day, they know exactly what they want to look for. They want a specific yeah. warmer or a specific this or specific that. With those at Christmas time, you can make up a ton of them and let them choose because they're not picky. They're just doing a secret Santa or whatever. But right. I know what I was going to say earlier when you were saying that you give away a gift at the end of your vendor event. So mm -hmm. I do that too. I make them fill out that form and tell them I'm giving away a gift. Um, and it's just, I tell them it's usually a plug in. And I let them choose which plug-in they want if I have it on hand. It's any of the ones I yeah. have on hand, you can pick. But I don't do mine at the end of the event. I do mine at the end of the month. So everybody that orders throughout the month. So my girlfriend ordered yesterday. She's in my drawing for this month. I do it at the end of the month only mm -hmm. because I don't have enough money to give something away at every single event that I do. Yeah, so and it depends on the size of the event. I've done the same thing where I do it like once a month. You yeah. know, I've tell I've told people at the end of the month I give something. If it's something that's a three day event where I'm making you know six hundred bucks a day, you know, then I do it at the end of that event. And I mean, there's some events that want you to donate, you know, a basket too. So you know, you have to weigh, you know, what you, the the whole purpose of the drawing is. You want to give them a reason to fill out that drawing slip. So whatever reason it is that you come up with, you know, then then that's what you do. There's no right or wrong. There's no you know, you have to do it this way. You can do it your own way. I mean, that's the beauty of this business that you can figure it out your own way. I mean, I've done it where I had like the warmer of the month. Like we were, we were just laughing at, at did anybody sell birds of a feather? Yes. You did. Who sold, wait, who said they sold birds of a feather? I sold three and I kept one. 
Did you really? Oh, Ruth, we're shipping them all to you. <laughs> the, the, one, the one this month is the element that lights up. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We, uh, none of, we were all, we were all just talking about that. None of us have sold any of it. Like, you know, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I Patty sold one. Woo, really? Patty sold I don't one. Care, I don't care for next month's warmer, but I don't like the ones with sayings yeah. on them too much anyway. No, I'm not crazy about the kitschy warmers. Like I just like a pretty yeah. warmer. So I don't yeah. necessarily like the ones that, you know, that's a scooter or a camper. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I've been terribly wrong on some of them because I'm like, this is never going to sell. And then it yeah. sells like crazy. And then yeah. the cow, I thought we could sell the cow. It's a whole running joke on our team. I actually built an entire month over selling that cow warmer. And, and I, we, so we saw one like by accident, <laughs> you know, but it was yeah. like a whole running joke, but you know, but so, yeah. so, I mean, I've done it where if it's a warmer of the month that I haven't been able to sell, I will make up a gift basket and yeah. I tell people and I'll put it in a pretty gift basket and I'll put a couple bars in there and I'll tell people that's what you win, you know, and people don't even pay attention to what's in it. It's the idea that they're going to win this gift basket. And I'll tell you, put it in the biggest basket you can. You could fill it with, you could fill it with a whole bunch of confetti and stuff. But if you put it in the biggest basket you can, then they're like, I'm going to win that. I'm telling you, they're bringing their friends back to fill out that drawing slip. <laughs> so years, years ago, we had a real, I call it a really ugly warmer. Regina or Belinda probably remembers it. It was called Maze. It was just a yellow warmer. It was like, you look. And so I put it in there and then the girl wanted to exchange it. And I said, no, it's, you want it, but you can have, and I put other stuff. I put bars and that stuff. I said, right. sell it on eBay. You can do that. They can do that. Right. Can you can do that. So, I tell them, yeah. gift it to a friend. If you, if you don't care for it, gift it to a friend. And then I will add, make sure you take light bulbs because yes. everybody will come to your event and ask for light bulbs. So make sure you have three, the three packs and mm -hmm. then make sure you have singles. And if I don't have any singles left, I just break my three pack open and give them one out of it. But yeah, they yes. will ask. And a lot of times they will only want one light bulb. Yeah. I just need one little 15 watt light bulb. Yep. You don't want three packs, Two bucks, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have Well, and there's also it. too, so, uh, you know, uh, lots of people too, like you've got to remember when you are ordering your products and what you've got on hand, you have paid tax for it. You have paid shipping for it, but you also got paid commission on it. So when you're selling your things, keep that in mind. So sometimes when I go to, if it's, if it's a busy, I will, I will try to remember to charge tax on things, but sometimes when it's busy, I'm just, you know, yep, it's $35. Yep, it's $35. You know, have multiple ways for people to pay you. Has anybody heard of a popple? Anybody? Okay, so I'll tell you all that's your homework is to go look it up. It's P O P L. Yep. The popples cost you anywhere between 15, and I can't show you because it's on the back of my phone, but it's this little disc. It's about this big. It looks like almost about the size of, you know, what are they, what are they called? The little pop out things that oh, you Ruth hold your it. phone with. Okay. You, Ruth, you have it? There it goes. Yeah, I, haven't used it. I haven't used it yet. I did, I got it after you told us the last time. Okay. So Ruth, <laughs> since I can't show them on our, on my phone, can you pull up your Popple app and show them? So your Popple, it costs you like 15 bucks, fits right on the back of your phone. It's very easy to set up. I am not techie at all but you can add all of your applications to there. You can add your contact information, your website. If you accept payments via Venmo or PayPal or Cash App, all of that stuff's on there. And literally all they have to do is touch their phone camera to the back of your phone, to your popple, and it will pull up your contact information, almost like them scanning a QR code. Now you see, they scan, if they scan it, it'll open up to that. Ruth, do you have your, um, like, uh, your payment types in there? I don't know. I haven't used it yet. I've just been playing with it. It's very easy to set up. So, you can, it can connect them to your Instagram, to your PayPal, to your, to your Twitter, to your Facebook, like anything that you want to, you choose what applications you put in there. And when they touch their phone to your popple, it will give them all the information and allow them to electronically pay you right there and then. Yeah. And then I tell them, save me to your contacts as your sensi lady. So here's the thing too, if anybody uses Square, mm -hmm. you can actually go into your Square. Let me find my Square, because I use Square a lot. I have all of my inventory in my Square. Um, it took a long time to put it in because you got you to gotta put all the codes in and all of your inventory, but I have um, 
I have all my categories listed in my inventory. And, and then I have all of the things listed. So anyway, what I was going to say is, even if you don't do that, you can use the, um, I'll show you the checkout. So if I put in $20, it automatically put in my tax because I have the tax set turned on. So it'll do it whether I scan in or enter what they're buying. So it takes it on my inventory or if I if I forget to do that or don't have the time and I just put in the amount they bought, it'll put the tax in there and calculate it. You just got to remember if your tax goes up to go back in there and change it. So I use Square a lot because then I can scan their credit card. Yeah. Do you, do you generally, as a rule, sell everything at the price that it is in the catalog? Or do you, like, if you have things that kind of have been laying around, like the cow, would you lower that <laughs> price? Sorry, yeah, you can't, I, I had to do it, Peg. <laughs> yeah, it's totally up to you. Like, I have stuff that, like, that's older, older stock, you know, and I'll tell people, you know, if, if somebody comes up and they see it and they go, oh, I really like that form or how much is that? And I go, it retails for $45, you know, right. and you see their reaction. If the reaction is a little $45, you just say, but I'm, I'm discounting it because it's no longer available, you know, or you could say, oh, it's no longer available. It's $45. You right. know what I mean? So it depends on the person, you know what I mean? It's more desirable because it's no longer available or it's, you know, it's crap that it's no longer available. So it depends. Yeah. So at the RV show last weekend, I had a bunch of the campers left and I told them and they said they weren't going to get it. And I said, that's, I have two left. And I said, that's it. You can't get any more. It's from last season. And they go, is it discounted? And I said, no, because it's the RV show. I'm not dis I'll sell them. I know I will, but then I'll discount other stuff. And here's the thing too, when you're doing events, so when you get home, you need to replenish your inventory that you sold. So you're going to enter a party and more than likely, hopefully your event went well and you'll do a $500 inventory, you know, replenish it with $500. So you're going to get uh, your three half price items and your perpetual, and then you're going to get your $75 worth of free stuff. So right. I buy some of those warmers. So if somebody does really want something and they just say, oh, no, no. I'll go on and maybe sell that warmer for half price or give them a give them ten dollars off or ten percent off because I might have bought a different warmer at a half price for my half price item. So right. you just have to remember what you have. Just don't right. Do so it all kinds of evens out in the end. Yeah. Right. Right. And yeah. that's and it. And you gotta remember, like, you know, you're you're first off, you're increasing your PRV when you're, when yeah. you're restocking, you're increasing your PRV and you don't have to, I mean, you could take the money and run if you want right. to, but your purpose for being there is to make the contacts, to meet yeah. new customers and to have that joint conversation. Anybody who purchases from me, and then that's still to this day, all of my customers know when they make a purchase from me, they're going to hear from me. Are you sure you don't want to earn commission on your own purchases? And I mean, now it's become a joke with some of my customers that I ask them every time. They'll start out and they'll go, no, I just want to buy the product, you know? And I'll laugh and I go, it is my obligation to offer you this opportunity because it's a wonderful opportunity. And it's all in the way that you present it to them. You know, so I mean, you know, you, you can make a joke out of it, however you do it, but you never know when it might be that person, you know? You see somebody with a couple of little kids, you say to them, hey, do you, do you work outside the home? How would you like to earn some extra money so you can take the kids for ice cream? How would you like to earn some extra money so maybe you don't have to put your kids in daycare? You know, look at their situation, right. have that conversation with them so that you know how to approach it. And I always, always, always bring with me opportunity packets. Does everybody well, what know what just, an opportunity packet is? That's what I was just going to say. I just got the $25 credit for one of my teams becoming, getting shooting start. So I used that and ordered the five pack of folders, you know, join my team folders, whatever they are. Right, right. So I figured I would make them up and then print out like my why story, put that in there, the brochure, the opportunity to join, all that stuff. But what else would you put in that as so a- So this is, this is what Patty's talking about. You can get folders like this in the store. I mean, this is an older version but you can get these in the store. And when you open it up, so in here, 
I have all kinds of information. So I have product um, brochure. I have a join information in here. This is all about the Sensi Club. I give them a scent circle. I have a brochure. Oops, uh, sorry, I'm trying to hold this with the phone. I have a brochure in here that I made all about my team. I did these on Vista print and here's a catalog. Um, here's, uh, this is like the join the opportunity information. And I have like a one sheeter that's like welcome to team embrace. And I'll give them that that kind of is the basics. But here's something for those who don't have a whole lot of money. See this? This is a 12 by 12. Um, this is a 12 by 12 like crafting sheet that you would do for like um, if you do um, scrapbooking. So it's a 12 by 12 sheet that literally I got it and I folded it to make little pockets. These are little pockets in here. I bought these little clear. Can you see the little clear sticker there? It's a clear circle. That's what holds the side still. I put some Scentsy stickers in there that I bought out of the Scentsy store. I created this little sticker here that says Scentsy Team Embrace. It has my contact information in there. Here's our little join sticker you can get from the store. And these cost me seven cents each. So, you know, there's no excuse to not have opportunity brochures. They are cheap enough. And you can see, you can see I have an array of colors and designs because I went in and I bought a whole bunch of them and I, and I pre-folded them. Look, there's one here that looks like a little bandana and there's colored ones. And I think, you know, the, so, I think the dollar store has some too. Yeah. So, you know, always, always have opportunity brochures and anybody who expresses any kind of interest whatsoever, give them an opportunity brochure, have the conversation with them. Once you start doing it, so many people are so nervous about having that conversation. Once you start doing it, it gets so much easier. The, and it's funny. So here's, this is just what happened in the last, in the last couple of days. So on the 12th, I have a customer from California orders from me regularly. Every time she orders from me, I ask her if she's ready to join my team. So are you ready to join my team and her money on the, on your own stuff? You know, you buy so much, you know, you know how much money you could be earning back. She goes, you know what? I'm too busy. And it's not, she said, but you know, I think my daughter might be good at that. She just had a baby and she quit her job so that she could stay home. She's got two toddlers now and she quit her job to stay home. I said, bingo, it's perfect. And I said, well, I know who our best customer is going to be. She gave me her daughter's phone number, texted her daughter, told her I'd be calling her, called her daughter, 15 minute conversation, her daughter signed up. Today, I had another customer who orders from me maybe once every three or four months. I always say something to her about it. Well, now she's moving from New Jersey to Georgia. And I said to her, you know what? You're moving. This is a great opportunity to meet new people. Sensi's a great way to like open that conversation and meet new people in your new location. Why don't you give it a try? She was purchasing $79 worth of stuff. I said, you know what? I have a $500 party closing. I could offer you a hostess kit for $39. Normally it's $59. I was giving her a little bit more. I said, I can offer it to you for $39. And she goes, so what would I do? Would I pay the $39 and then place my order? I said, well, you pay the $39 to join. I will give you, she was ordering the little garden warmer. I will give you the little garden warmer so I used the perpetual reward to ship her the little garden warmer. So basically she joined for free. I gave her a dollar extra because the garden warmer is $40. She, I used my hostess credits because I had a $500 party closing. And then I said to her, the rest of the stuff that you want to order, as soon as your website's up, first thing you want to do is go out there and create a party and order your own stuff. Boom, join conversation. And she, she said, you know what? That sounds like a great deal. There you go. Great deal. And it didn't cost me anything because I used my perpetual rewards, my free and half price items. So it cost me a half price item to get a new team member. And she's moving to Georgia and we needed somebody in Georgia, didn't we ladies? We didn't have anybody on the map on Georgia. And I was like, you're moving to Georgia? Wait, you need to join my team. <laughs> we, we've got this goal. Of We're taking over the state. East Coast and we're spreading <laughs> out. That's right. <laughs> we yeah, didn't have anybody in Georgia. I'm like, ah, that spot on the map is empty. We need to fill it in. <laughs> And I also um, have booked people that have booked parties. Mm -hmm. So if they don't want to join, then I'll say, well, why don't you have a party? You're buying all this. You could get all this for free if you would have a party. Mm -hmm. So I can, I try to convert that to part, you know, have a, have a book party or, or a home party or whatever it is, whenever. The and you can, and if you feel more comfortable, you could start with that conversation. 
somebody's ordering something and you say, oh, do you have a Sensi Consultant? If they say no, they don't have a Sensi. Callie says hi. If they don't have a Sensi Consultant, you say, you know, well, I'd love to be your Sensi Consultant. Have you thought about having a party? You know, and if they're like, oh, I don't know, you know, we're all, yeah, maybe I'll have a party and say, you know, if you have a party, you could earn your kit for free or, you know, little or no out of pocket. We're not allowed to say free. So just <laughs> get our lingo right. You say little or no out of pocket costs. You know, the word free, we're not supposed to be using, even though the kit would technically be free with a $500 party. It's, um, you know, it's still, they have to earn it. So. The creative has always been a thing for me. Everybody knows it. I'm very not sure of myself with it. But lately, I've just been like, forget it. I'm just asking everybody. And they're mm -hmm. either going to join or they're not. Like, I'm past that nervous stage. And the quicker you get past that, I think the better it is. So I'll be at this event throwing them things at people. Like, <laughs> catch! <laughs> And really, I, I mean, honestly, everybody gets like that. They're like, oh, I don't like to ask people. The more you do it, the more comfortable you will get with it. You know, every, nobody wants rejection. Everybody's afraid of rejection. I don't care how confident you are. I come off like nothing would bother me. Look, when somebody says to me, no, or they don't like me, we all feel that way. Everybody feels that way. Nobody wants anybody to not like them or to be mad at them or say no to them, reject them in any way, shape or form. Nobody likes that. But I can tell you that the more often you offer the opportunity, the more you will feel like you are offering them a gift. And you really are because some people, this is the best thing that ever happened to them. You know, I could tell you it's the best thing that ever happened to Patty. Right, Patty? <laughs> And if Lauren didn't chase Yes, her it down. is. <laughs> nope. And if you hear the new one that Amory that was on the other night, you know, uh -huh. I hounded her to death. I took a lesson from Lauren. And my new, <laughs> my newest one, same thing. She's like, if you wouldn't have stopped hounding me, I was like, no, I was not going to. So <laughs> thanks, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> but You're really, welcome. I mean, sometimes it's just seeing that in somebody sometimes they don't see it in themselves. And when you've been in this business long enough, you realize what kind of person would be good at this. And sometimes it's somebody who's super outgoing like me. Sometimes it's somebody who's a little bit more reserved and shy, you know, but you just see something in them and they, if they love the product. You can sell Sensi if you love the product, because it's not about saying, do you want to buy Sensi? It's about saying, oh my God, look at this counter clean. I love this counter clean. You know, you're selling it by just enjoying what it is that you love and sharing that with people. That's your selling point. You know, so, and I mean, it's the same thing with people, do, people meet me at events and I have, I've been doing this, I'll be six years in July. I feel the same way about this that I did back in July of 2015 when I first joined. I have a fire and excitement about it because I see what it has done for me and my family. I have gone, I had to get a passport. I have never been outside the country. I had never been to an all-inclusive. I had never flown on a plane by myself. I did all of that stuff for the first time because of this business. For me, it's a travel plan. It's not for everybody, but you will find that this is a growth opportunity. So because it's a growth opportunity and it gets people out of their way, you know, I mean, we, we are our own worst enemies. It's right between your ears. There you go. Your worst enemy is right there, right between your ears. It's stuck in here. You can be anything that you want to be. So put on your, your sensi check. Be the sensi check. You know, whoever you are, Berlinda, when you're sitting at home on your chair, you're Berlinda. But when you go out and you do an event, you can be anybody you want. They don't know you. Yep. They don't know that you're shy. They don't know that you're, you're talking to them and you're ready to vomit. They don't know that. So when you go out there, you be super confident, positive peg. And you get out there and you go, I'm the sensi lady. Wait till you see what I got because I got the best thing you've ever seen. You know, put on, be that, you know, that uh, salesman, the sham wow salesman. And go out there and tell them all about your sham wow. Isn't that what Orville did? Ruth, yeah. wasn't it? Orville yeah. did sham wows yeah. before sensi. Yeah. yeah. So, and I mean, I was, you know. And I was going to just say too, make sure you brand yourself. So wear, I don't have my Scentsy shirt on. I have my dog one on today, but make sure you wear a Scentsy shirt or a sweatshirt. Like when I do my outside events, my, my Scentsy has it on the back. So when I walk into the restroom, they'll go, oh, look. And I'll tell them, yeah, so the Scentsy booth's in that tent or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then always buy, I used to, Scentsy used to give us bags in our orders and they were clear bags. 
Mm -hmm. Now you have to buy the bags that say Cincy. Make sure you do that because somebody will be walking around and I've had this happen. They walk around with that bag and it says Cincy and they go, Where, where's the Cincy booth at? Mm -hmm. and they'll tell them, oh, it's over on that aisle. If it's a, you know, because my big, my events are bigger. But yeah, make sure you brand yourself and you put your, don't put your stuff in. Like when I do, when I give it to my girlfriend, I just put it in a Walmart tack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, and that friends. is when you do events, like it's yeah. funny because I buy, I usually go to the dollar store and I buy like, you know, little handle bags and I'll tie yeah. ribbons around it and stuff like that to make them all pretty when I'm delivering it to my customers. Right. But when right. I go do events, it's always the clear bag that says Sensi. I buy them in every size. We have them yeah. small, medium, large, and extra large. Yeah. I buy them in every size. They, they all have a handle to them. So, and here's another tip on, on the side of like one of my racks, on the side of one of my racks, I use like a shower curtain ring. I use a shower curtain ring and I hang the bags in all different sizes. So they're easy for me to pull off the ring. They're very easy for me to get to. I'm not ruffling all over the place, you know, to find your stuff, you know, so make it so that it's easy for you to get to it. And you know, when you're packing up your bags, I always have, um, like I make up little packets. So I get dollar store and let me show you those two. I get dollar store loot bags. I fold up the product sheet. I'll put my business card in there and then I'll put a little sample in there. And I have those all ready when I am handing out um, my packets. Where's so when I'm, when I'm packing up my orders, this is what I give to people. It's dollar store. It's a product sheet folded up. It's got a little scent sticker on there. Even if it's not the scent that's inside, I'm a hoarder for scent stickers. I love scent stickers, but I will put um, brochures in there. You know, I will carry a couple of books with me because occasionally you will have somebody say, oh, do you have a book? And if it's somebody who's ordering things, you know, somebody places a hundred dollar order or they buy, you know, a hundred dollars worth of stuff. I'm giving them a catalog. I want them to come back. I'm giving them a catalog. So I generally don't put those on display unless it's somebody who bought something. Then I'll say to them, oh, I, I stuck the catalog in your bag too. But you want to have all that stuff very handy so that when you're packing the order for them to leave, you get all that stuff and you just stick it in there. And then you could say, oh, I stuck a couple samples in there. Sometimes I will take old testers and you guys that are, that are newer will learn over time. You will get to the point where you have so many testers, you don't know what to do with them. So sometimes I will bring those to events, stick them in a basket and say, you know, oh yeah, sure. Feel free to take a couple of those testers. I have had people stand there for a half hour to smell a basket full of testers. <laughs> Blocking up the entrance to my booth and always too with your booth, make it so that people come into your booth. So I usually do mine like a U shape, yep. you know, so you make it, you want to make it welcoming. Some people bring carpet, put a carpet down. You want something that's going to draw them in. I usually spray my tablecloths with room spray. You don't need to buy Scentsy tablecloths, but always make sure that you have a tablecloth that's long enough that it covers to the ground and you can put all your stuff under the table. Make it neat, make it tidy, make it inviting. And I spray my money. Yeah. Yeah. So all those little they things like, you, you know, think about all those things that you would want when you go shopping, what would attract your attention? You know, what would make it so that you would want to go into a booth when you've got somebody that's sitting behind the table and they're playing on their phone and they're ignoring, you know, and, and people just walk by. I engage everyone when they're walking by, I go, Hey, how you doing today? Come on over and give us a sniff. Like that gets, that gets a chuckle out of people. You know, my, my one girlfriend, Terry, that I would do events with all the time, we would, we would do like sort of good cop, bad cop. And I was the dirty one. So I would say to people and I go, come on over and give us a sniff. And she go, you know, I can't take her anywhere, you know, and it would make people chuckle. It would make people laugh, but it would engage in the conversation. They're walking by outside events. They bring their dogs. I always talk to their dog. I always pet their dog. I bring dog treats with me to some of them. I bring candy to some of them. I'll offer candy to their kids. Whatever is going to stop them from just walking by your booth. And I've offered um, the kids the extra uh, scent of the month stickers. If I have mm -hmm. them left over, I'll put those there and ask them if they want a tattoo. Yeah. Do you want a sticker? Look, yeah, get yeah. this and put it on your shirt. Put it on your yeah. hand. Yeah, that, that's really good to like get people and, you know, to tell them, give it a sniff. And I will tell you something else. And it's sort of risky, but it stops parents because the kids run right over. I have done it where I take a little wagon and I will put my buddies in a wagon. 
they're going to get touched. They're going to get sniffed, <laughs> you know, yeah. but you know, it depends on the event. I, I do like that pumpkin show that I do. They always have like a Halloween parade and I put them down low where the kids can see them and the kids can smell them. You know, the parents will all be like, don't touch it. Don't touch it. You know, <laughs> but it's always good to have that stuff that's available. You know, you want to have something that's out there. That's going to smell the fan diffusers are great to put out. And I'll tell you the two scents that will bring people into your booth, vanilla bean buttercream and blueberry cheesecake. Both of those scents travel really far. So it's really good to bring them in. And if you're doing a diffuser, lemon, straight up lemon. Lemon makes people sp spend money. Did you guys know that? I had no idea, but it works. <laughs> people and will I, spend money. <laughs> and I stay away from the cinnamon and the peppermint because some people are allergic to that stuff. So mm -hmm. like at Christmas time, at one of my home shows, I was doing a cinnamon one and the girl was like two booths down from me and she came over and asked. And so I took it out and put vanilla bean buttercream because she was allergic to cinnamon and it was starting to affect her. Yeah. And I usually ask if I'm at, a, if I'm at like a, a long event, I will ask the people next to me, are there any particular smells that bother you? You want, you want them to love you. You yeah. don't want to be that annoying scentsy lady that's making them sick. Like they, you know, have you ever been someplace where somebody's burning incense and it just like makes you, you know, gives you an instant headache. You don't want to be that person. So I always try and make friends with the other vendors that are around me. I had a lady, literally we went to, we went to a three day event. Again, it was this pumpkin event and the lady booked a pink zebra. Pink zebra is like our, you know, rival company, I guess, you know, pink zebra was literally directly across from me. By the time we were done, we were such good friends with the pink zebra lady. And she was coming over to us going, what are you guys doing? Because they literally were standing there doing nothing. So by the last day, I said to her, can I give you constructive criticism? Can I tell you what it is that you're doing wrong? You're not engaging people when they walk by. You are not explaining to them what it is that you've got. It looked like you had dot ice cream in your containers. It looked like dipping dots. Like that's, theirs are little tiny wax beads. And you can mix them. And they had some adorable warmers that were out, but nobody knew what it was. You know, Pink Zebra isn't, isn't as well known as Scentsy. So people didn't know what it was. And they were standing back there waiting for people to approach them. You know, and it was funny because the girl that I was with actually went over and bought. They had this little witch boot. And theirs are, they have like one warmer you know, almost like our etched core. And then they have things that fit over top of it. So it's like you buy that one warmer and then you can fit these sleeves over top of it. So they had a little witch boot and it, she, I said, can I see if that fits on our etched core warmer? And it did. And she bought it and, I, and she, and they give it to her in this big giant pink zebra box and bag. And I said to her, you will walk to the parking lot and you will put that in your damn car. You are not having a big pink zebra box sitting at my Sensi booth. <laughs> You know, but, yeah. and, you know, I mean, so it's just, you know, be respectful of the people that are around you. You know, you want to engage people. And every event that I go to, people are always like, oh, my God, those sensey people, like, they really know what they're doing. And, you know, like, we we get very personable. And and I, everybody that's on my team that has done an event with me, by the time they're done, everybody at the event knows who they are, yeah. you know. And engage them, but don't hassle them. Like, I know this weekend, I mean, I said hi to everybody that went by and, you know, asked them if they knew Cincy, come on in and smell. But the guy next to us was selling makeup and he would chase the guy. If the woman said no, he would follow her like over to my booth and to the booth to, to on down, yeah. trying to get her to come back to his booth. <laughs> I don't do that. If they're not in, if I engage with them and they don't come in or they don't stop or they say they'll right. be back i just leave it i don't yeah. i don't want to be a hassle but i do try to like engage with everybody yeah and i'll say to them you know hey come on over give us a sniff you know we have a drawing do you want to fill out our drawing slip you know and some people go no nah, thank you i just let those people yeah. walk by but yeah. other people if they look like they're interested engage them in conversation you know i mean you you have to you have to be able to tell yourself whether somebody's, you know, you're getting on somebody's nerves or whether it's somebody who's, you know, ready to take it to the next step, you know, but definitely, you know, be upbeat, be engaging, make them, you know, be interested in what it is that you have to offer, you know, and don't be afraid to bring a bunch of samples of different things. I did, um, I did one, you know, psychic event where I, that, that day I decided I went and bought a bunch of the little, um, the little tester bottles from Amazon. And I made a whole bunch of counter clean samples. 
And everybody that came through, you know, we're like a hundred people that were there for the reading. So I brought with me, I literally bought 200 samples with me, but everybody who was there got a sample of the counter clean. It had a description of what it was and it had all my information on there. And they all went home with a sample of counter clean. And I was like, everybody who's here gets a free sample of counter clean. And I was come over and get your sample. You know, some people just grabbed their sample and went away, but I gained like three or four customers that now order from me regularly because I gave out those counter clean samples. And, and I mean, I made those 200 samples and it was one bottle counter clean. So it cost me 10 bucks, you know, and, and like the, I forget what the bottles were on Amazon. It was like a hundred of them for like 12 bucks or whatever. So it didn't really cost me that much money and it got me some regular customers and it at least exposed people to, Oh, I didn't know that you had counter clean. I didn't know that you had cleaning products, you know, so it opens up the conversation for the other things. And if it's somebody who comes and they're just buying wax, say, oh, have you seen, you know, we just came out with fan diffusers. Have you seen them? And lots of times their, their consultant isn't introducing them to the new stuff. Yeah. So be that person that's at the vendor event. And you could, and I've already said to people, you go back to your consultant and you tell them that you want to hear all about the diffusers. You didn't know we had diffusers, you know? And I'll say, you, you say Peg sent you over and it said to tell you that to teach you all about the diffusers, you know? I mean, and I, I sort of approach things as I'm here to educate you about, you know, my company and the products that I have to offer. I did want to ask, um, Ruth, since you just did an event, did you see, because we're, you know, with COVID and stuff, did you see a difference in, I mean, we're a fragrance company. You know, like <laughs> you got to take your mask down and smell things and stuff, you know, were people still as interested as they were before with the that? Ones, stuff? Yeah, the ones that Was came there anything in the different that I you told, had to do? Yeah. And I told them, I said, I am fine. I let them know that I was fine with it because I would rather not wear a mask. And I, when I wouldn't, I didn't wear a mask. But when they came into my booth, I would put my mask on. But if we were just sitting there and there was a law, I would take my mask off because it wasn't a mandate down in the town I went to. But I did take my mask and I would put it on when they came in. And then I would tell them, I would kind of step away and let them smell the wax. And I would tell them, you can take, you can pull your mask down and smell it if you want. I didn't mm -hmm. have an issue with that. I mean, they're, it's not like they're going to stick it in their yeah, face, you know. <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah, I did one a couple of months ago and I had some people who were just, you know, who tried to smell it through their mask and they were like, oh, I could smell it right through my mask, you know, right. and then I had other people who pulled their nose down. Most people didn't even ask. They just did whatever they were right. going to do. Yeah. yeah. Cause you know, some places are different than others. It's like, okay, you're use pens and then you're clean pens. <laughs> like yeah. what? Yeah. You know, well, you know what? It's funny because the one that I did a couple of months ago, I just bought a container of Lysol wipes and had it sitting on the table. Yeah. So the people felt more comfortable, you know, yeah. and like, and like if you have hand sanitizer or yeah. something, put that out. I'm not going to be yeah. like checking your, checking your temperatures for you to come like no. look at my stuff, yeah. you know? And I did I have one lady who, who preferred to take the pen out of her. She took the pen out of her handbag instead of using my pen, but then she picked up my clipboard to fill out the form. So, you know. <laughs> and I had, you I touched my pen, but you held the clipboard. So whatever. <laughs> and I had hand sanitizer. On your so, table. But, yeah. Yeah. But I do know um, it wasn't as good as it was the year before. The year yeah. before we did it in January, before COVID, and even my sales and everything and the and the group of people were better. And then we did one in March of last year, and it was horrible because that was right at the beginning of COVID. The guy didn't even make enough to pay for the event center. It was a sports yeah. show or an RV show. But this year, I think because they were, were they were in like phase two, I think. Yeah. I don't know what the phases are. And so there was a lot more people that showed up, but I still didn't do as good as I, I did the year before. Yeah, I think some people are still reserved and not coming out as much, but you know, I mean, I have an event I'm doing this weekend that's a maternity consignment event. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how well they do. So yeah. it's like kids toys and, and, you know, maternity clothes and stuff like that. So we'll see, I mean, because, Personally, if I were pregnant, I don't know if I'd be going out, you know, to an event like that yet, but you know, we'll see. Lauren, are you going to it? Where is it? It's at um, Total Turf. I'll send you the, it's called JBF Consignment. JBF stands for Just Between Friends Consignment and it's right in Pittman. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah, right in Pittman. Yeah, at the total turn. Yeah. Right down yeah, the street. Yeah, so I'm doing it so Friday afternoon, days. all day Saturday and Sunday. So anybody, are you are? Yeah. yeah, anybody who's in the area and wants to come over, feel free okay. to stop so over events, to see the booth. And those events, those JBF events, are good to take your buddies and your clips. Yeah, buddy clips and all that, all that kid stuff. Or like the kids. Yeah, you know what I'm doing? I'm doing, I bought those giant Easter eggs. Have you guys seen yep. those displayed? Yep. So I bought the giant Easter eggs and I'm putting the buddy clips in there and putting some grass around it. And I'm going to have an entire basket full of those so people, they can grab and go. Yep. You know, they're great for, um, they're great for Easter stuffers. And this is a perfect time for those. Yep. I'm hoping my bunnies come. My bunnies, I'm waiting for them to ship. And I'm like, come on, I need my buddies. So so I have a couple of those on order. So, all right. Where did, so I wanted, where did you um, find the eggs? Sorry. Real um, quick. Actually, I, I bought them from uh, Oriental Trading, but I've just recently seen them at Dollar Tree. Yeah. Dollar Tree only had them like my Dollar Tree only had them in blue and green. The ones I ordered from Oriental Trading, I paid, uh, it was like 1150 for a dozen of them. And they came like three purple, three yellow, three blue, three pink, you know. Got it. Yeah. So, okay. Does anybody have any more questions? I'm going to end us. Anybody, anybody learn anything that they're going to carry forward? Y'all going to go out there and book a bunch of vendor events and sell all your goodies. And seriously, I, you know, it depends on whose team you're on, but anybody who has vendor events, if you are looking for just a backup and a ride along, I'm more than happy any that are in the local area to come and help you and, you know, get your word out there. It's your event. You make the money on it. I'm more than happy to come out and help you. Vendor events are my jam. That's where I, that's where I meet lots of, lots and lots of people. And that's how I've expanded the business. So when you do so outside, Lauren, I'm sorry, go ahead. When you do outside vendor events, you usually use your tent like mm -hmm. you're talking about. And what size do you have? Cause I know um, the spot that I have is 12 by 12. So. Yeah. Most of this, most of the, the areas are 10 by 10. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you do most vendor events, they give you a 10 by 10 space. Now I have, I have uh, two tents that are 10 by 10 and I have one that's 12 by 14. Okay. So it depends on the 10 event, by 10, 10 would by be 10. the best investment at this point. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the Thank one, you. actually, my husband just bought me one for Christmas. That's purple. Nice. It's purple Somebody and it has purple sides to it too. So he bought was, me that for Christmas from Amazon. And I was going to say, I do use the sides because it will help keep the sun out. But mm -hmm. then what I do is in the Cincy store, there's those, uh, those streamer things that have the triangle flags on them that say Cincy. I'll hang that on the outside or the big flag or the blanket. I'll yeah. My old director out. sent me one of them when I first started. So so that way, if you <laughs> do have them down because it's raining or the sun's too hot, it's going to melt your wax or whatever, at least you got something on the outside of the tent that they know where you're right. at. Right. And it's funny because I will get my wax and move it from side to side yeah. as the sun comes up and the sun goes down. And yeah. I will tell you, I did one event that was in the summer and it was inside a gym and their air conditioning broke. So goodness. they opened all the doors and they had all the fans and everything running. They were putting fans up for us. And I had my wax hanging. My wax literally was dripping, dripping. Oh, no. Yes. So some of those summer events, you know, I've seen people bring little baby blow up pools and put ice in it. I've seen people put a couple of bars of wax out and keep them in a cooler. So the summer events are really tough on our wax. So keep that in mind. And so when we did the summer event, we took, you know, the Tupperware containers you can slide under your bed. Mm -hmm. So you can actually stack your bars in there and still get the lid on it. So we right. would take them that way, but then we would take ice. And once we got there, we would put ice in the bottom of it. And then we would put a towel on top of it and then put our wax back on it. And that, that water in there, and then we'd have to dump it out each night and then refill it the next day. Yeah. But yeah. And that's the containers that I just showed you. The containers I showed you, that's what yeah. they are. They're the under the bed containers. Yeah. So the wax will sit up straight and the lid yeah. will still fit on there. Yeah. I used to use um, Christmas tree ornament containers, but yeah. you had to store your wax flat and you could just stack them three high. You had to store them flat. And then when I'd go to the events, I would stand them up because they were nice because they were kind of in rows. 
-hmm. you know, and they were nice and like, they come with those little separator things. When you put your Christmas ornaments in it, I just wouldn't use the separator things. But every time I went to an event, I had to stand them all up and then I had to lay them all down and I had to stand them all up and lay them all down, you know? And it held more when they were standing up than when they were laying down. So I always had an empty container, you know, that I would do that. But these are great because I literally can just take these containers and, you know, and, and plop them on a table. If it's a big enough event, three of those containers fit across the table. You know, if I do it that way, but with the, for the bigger events, I take my hanging stuff. And for the real small events, I scale it down to one container. That's kind of a sampling because I will also tell you, you know what they're going to buy? They're going to buy what you've got. Yeah. So don't think that you have to have every single bar. Cause I can promise you, if you only had 15 bars, their, their choices are less and they're going to buy what you've got. Yeah. And then I always upsell them. So if they wanted four bars, I'll say, you know what, you can get another bar for $30 and you can get, or whatever it is. And then it'll be yeah. 30 and you get a free one. Or if they're doing that and they're looking at a warmer, I say, you know, you can buy three bars and a warmer and save $3. So I always upsell them if I can. Yeah. So remember that too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I always do the bundle and save option when I'm at events. I always offer that. Yeah. You know, some people go to events and they, and they don't do that, but I always offer them exactly what's in the catalog because you don't want them to go home and pay for six bars of wax and pay $6 each and then go home and go, wait a minute, in the catalog, it says I could buy five and get one free. You know, right. you don't want to be that consultant. And I had that happen to me. I did a motorcycle show and the girl came up on a Sunday and on Saturday, she had went to the World of Wheels show in town and she was asking me what, how much my bars were. And I said, well, they're $6, but and then the three and then the six pack. But I said, this month, they're all 10% off. And she goes, well, that girl at that, I bought a whole bunch yesterday at the Wheel of Wheels and she didn't give me 10% off. Yeah. And I even carry that over. If it's a 10, like they used to, used to do February and August is 10% month on everything. Now I think it's just the bars, but I do whatever since he's offering, that's what I give. Yeah. And if an item, if an item goes on clearance and I haven't stopped, those Philly warmers, I could, I could have spit when those Philly hat warmers went on sale because I paid $50 for the one that I've had forever, you know, and now guess what? I got to sell it for $12.50, you know? So, you know, that's sort of, and, and, you know, Hey, tax write off. So think of it that way, tax write off. Well, I actually ordered two of them to take yeah. to this event because it's like in Philly. So, right. <laughs> right. Well, you know, what? I, I bought a couple of them to do for basket raffles. Yeah. I have to donate one. I have to donate a basket for that sale. That might go in there. It might be a Phillies. Yeah, Patty, basket. you know what I did? Um, I could send you a picture of what I did. I put yeah. the Phillies warmer on top of the box mm -hmm. and then I did red, white, and blue wax. Perfect. Yeah, I did it so you yeah. can see the back of the wax. Perfect. I love that idea. Yeah. And it mm -hmm. and it was really cute. So I just sat there yeah. on the top, put the Phillies helmet on top. I did it with shrink wrap. And then mm -hmm. I put samples around the sides. Oh, I love it. Yeah, send me I the picture. I did like one of our brochure catalogs in the back. I folded mm -hmm. it like this so I could put the plug in between okay. the catalog so it looked nice. <laughs> oh, nice. That's a great yeah. idea. And yeah, an opportunity so really well. um, folder, right? Uh, no, I, I actually just did the brochure. <laughs> oh, okay. I did the brochure book, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> but in there, in there, the opportunity. The, I know, right. <laughs> and, when, and when you're doing your donation, like if you have an event where you have to do a donation, always give them the box. Or if you're doing a basket, always give them the box. And I've even done it where the box wouldn't fit in the bag, the basket I was doing. So I took the warmer out and put it in the basket and then I folded the box up. Right. So they still had the box. And then I used the, the little cardboard thing that the box set on to put the warmer in and that and put you know, the shred yeah, stuff around, shred around it. Yeah. yeah. I always give them the box. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because, you know, I mean, if somebody wants to re-gift it or something like that, yeah. you want to make sure they have it. So any other questions before we log off? Okay. I hope you ladies learned something. Thank you for Thank joining you us. Thank you very much. Thank you. This will be up. Thank you much. All right. Have a great night. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Bye.